In this video, we're gonna talk about blend shapes and basically just the simplest bare bones setup as possible, or at least as simple as I could come up with. And I feel like it's important that you understand or that anyone understands how to set this up in a very, very simple context because uh, there's just a few specific details that you need to get right in order for blend shapes within the animation context, right? Like, so if you're animating an apex, you want to be able to access your blend shapes. There's a, there's a specific thing that you need to do in order to get it to work. So uh, I'm going to set it up very, very, uh, like I said, the simplest method that I came up with, and then it'll be up to you to expand upon it and create more complex setups to set everything up in a component script. Yeah, let's go ahead and get started. So first thing I wanted to talk about really quick is I wanted to compare the blend shape SOP with the, with the apex blend shape node. So if we were gonna set up a blend shape really quick, right, just a very, very simple blend shape, I'm gonna put down an apex edit graph so that we can look at the blend shape node here. So SOPs blend shapes 2.0. Now, the important little attribute that needs to be, I guess, I guess initialized in our blend shape SOP, or rather our blend shapes node, is this N blends down here at the bottom. If we look at our blend shape SOP node over here, we have this blend one, right? So as you start putting, let's change this a little bit. I'm gonna put another blend shape in here. So as you start putting blend shapes into here, you start getting this array geometry into here. This N blends down here essentially represents this geometry array. So when you build this N blends in there, you need to, or rather when you build your, your SOPS blend shape node within your apex graph, this N blend, this N blends uh, parameter here needs to be initialized and it needs to be initialized correctly in order to work. And the best way that I found to do that is within a component script. So why don't we just quickly go ahead and create a base setup and we'll go and see how to do that. We're gonna keep this in the context of uh, using a skin character. So let's pretend that we have a skin character and we want to be able to drive a blend shape uh, with a control. I'm gonna create a quick joint. So we extract the centroid and I put a rig doctor down. So we initialize the transforms. Let's put down a capture packed geometry. So we're gonna pack the input and unpack the output and make sure that we transfer all of our attributes so that we transfer our skinning attributes as well. Just say star. And for the joint, we're gonna select our point. So let's create our blend shape as we did before and turn that up. I'm gonna give this a name and we're just gonna call it blend, right? I'm gonna name the primitives to blend. And then I'm gonna pack this. This is, this is important, this needs to be packed. So let's make sure that we're transferring our attributes and our name attributes. Let's make sure that we have our name passed onto there. So let's pack everything up. That's gonna be our base shape, our skeleton and our blend shape. Okay, so we have the base shape, the base scale, and this is gonna be our blend shape input. So this is gonna be a blend. You, I mean, you can call this, you know, whatever you want. I'm just gonna call it blend. And this is gonna be a shape. And one thing you could do so that you don't have to look at it while you're working is, is you can actually turn off the visibility. So it'll hide. Okay, so now that we have that all packed, let's initialize our rig. So FK transform. And then I'm gonna put down a bone deform as well. So now we can move around our skin geometry. I'm gonna unpack our rig now so that we can look at it while we work. So here's our basic setup. From here, let's put down an edit graph and let's throw down the nodes, the proper node setup that we need in order to get this to work. I'm gonna expand this. So we need a set prim header value by name. And when this is gonna be a float. So the geo that's gonna go into here is gonna be that blend shape geo that we passed in. So in order to grab that, we're gonna go up here and grab the blend dot shape. Okay, so now that's in there. And the value that we're gonna grab is the blend. Okay, I'm gonna name both of these to blend. And now this name corresponds with the name that I 
gave to this packed geometry, right? The blend. So now we have to build that geometry array, right? Remember within our SOP node, we had that geometry array. So let's build that. It's gonna go into here. And now let's put down the actual blend shape node. So in our first input, that's gonna be our base shape, right? Just like in the blend shape node. And the second input is gonna be that array. Okay, I'm gonna color all of this sort of a purple. And then we're gonna plug this output into the first input of our bone deformation. So that's gonna go up here. All right, so let's jump out of this. Now let's pack all this up and make sure that everything's working. So let's put this over here. This is gonna go into our first slot and this is gonna go into our second slot and this is gonna be our rig. Let's put down an animate node and everything is still working. Cool, but we still don't have any access to our blend shapes. I'm gonna pin this so that we don't lose it. So in this case, I'm gonna set it up using an abstract control. And if you watched my last tutorial on abstract controls, you might remember that the abstract control solves a problem within the apex animation context. And that's the issue of not being able to access float parameters directly while you're in that apex animation state. What the abstract control does is that it connects you to that float parameter while you're animating. So if I take this parameter here, right? This is a float parameter, the blend. If I plug that into the abstract control, we'll call this blend CTRL. And if I jump back to my scene animate and reset, I now have two controls and I have my blend control in here. But so far it's not doing anything, right? And that's because, as I mentioned before, our end blends is not initialized. So if I were to go to my geometry spreadsheet and look at my blend shape node, which is right here, right? Let's give it a name. I'm gonna call this BS node. I need to update the parameters of my BS node and it has to look just like this. So you see it's a nested array within this N blends. So we have our blend hash zero and then the blend hash uh, one. This, these are the weights of our blend. You have to set this up within your BS node, or rather your blend shape node in the parameters. And we're gonna do that using a component script. So after we pack, I'm gonna put down another auto rate component, put down an edit graph. It's gonna go into the second input. And in my window here, I'm gonna split this into two panes. On my left, I want my unpack folder so I can see what my rig is doing as I update it. Even though I'm not really gonna make too many changes to the actual rig. Hang on, unpack folder, there we go. All right, now we need the dot rig. Okay, so I'm gonna pin that over here. And then on my right, I'm gonna have my component script. Let's initialize the component script here. So we need not the graph, but we need the character and the graph name. Graph name is going to be rig name. Oh, whoops, this is the update character graph. We need the extract character graph. Right, there we go. So rig name, and then we update the character graph. So character to character, graph to graph, graph name to graph name, character. All right, now let's put this on to use second input. Let's see, something is not, ah, oh, right, because I did not rename these. So we have to get rid of those underscores, at least on the output, but it makes sense to do it on both. So now we have our rig back. Okay, so let's do what we were just talking about. Let's update the dictionary of our blend shape node. Let's update those parameters so that we can actually start using our blend shapes. So we're gonna find this end blends here and we're gonna add that nested array so that our blend shape works properly. So I wanna be able to find the blend shape by name. So this would be BS name. I'll rename this to BS node name. Go to my auto array component and reset. Now I can actually type in the name of the node, which is BS node. And then we'll say find node, value to path, graph to graph. So now we have our node, BS node. Next thing we need to do is update the node. So now that we have it, we need to go in and update the parameters. So below here, 
I'm gonna make a dictionary, so dictionary build, and we're gonna start with an, an array build dictionary. Okay, so we're gonna set up that array. So let's put down a couple of dict set float. There we go. Okay, so these are gonna be those blend hash floats. So within both of these, we're gonna say blend hash, just copy and paste. So one is gonna be set to zero and the other is gonna be set to one. We'll plug these into the values, plug that into here, and this is gonna go into n blends. And that dictionary is gonna go up into the parameters of that blend shape node. Set those to green. And now let's go back to our unpack folder and let's check out the parameters of our blend shape node. Let's see what it looks like. All right, and that looks exactly the way we need it to. Uh, but we are missing that pack. So if we wanted to, we can always throw that in. That's gonna go into pack and we'll set that to one. So now if we go back to our unpack folder, whoops, I realized uh, that I just plugged this into the build dictionary and not the actual dictionary. So that just became another value within this array. So that's why it wasn't working. So let's actually plug this into here and that'll be our pack. So let's jump back to our unpack folder. And now we have and, and blends, blend zero, blend one and pack. Let's jump down to the scene animate and see where we are. All right, I actually missed a very important step here. So when we create these nodes, and I always miss this one when I'm setting this up, within this set prim attribute values by name node, we actually have to, we have to fill in these attributes. And the name attribute is gonna be name, and the weight is gonna, or the attribute name that we're gonna set is gonna be the weight. So let's see how that's looking. And now we have our blend shape working and we can control it, which is very, very nice. So that's the most basic setup to get your uh, a geometry based blend shape working. Um, one thing we could also do if you wanted to expand upon this a little bit is kind of clean up our abstract control. So we set limits to how far we can go with our abstract control, because right now we're, we're, way overshooting the actual blend shape. So if we wanted to set minimum and, and maximum values on our abstract control, we could do that. And we could do that by updating, it's sort of like a, the, the abstract control is weird because it has like a nested dictionary. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how you're supposed to know about this at this point, um, you know, because documentation on Apex is, is slim to none. But yeah, the abstract control has some nested dictionary attributes that you can set. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna set up another value string and this is gonna be the abstract CTRL. So abstract CTRL, value, graph to graph. Okay, so now we have an abstract control. So we're gonna do another graph update node because we're gonna set up, we're, we're gonna update the properties, not the, not the parameters in this case, but the properties of our abstract control. That's gonna go into the node ID, graph to graph, and there we go. So to build out this dictionary properly, let's look at our blend CTRL. So what we're going to be updating is this properties array up here. So let's go ahead and set up the base structure first, and then we'll start filling out the individual attributes. So we're gonna need three dictionaries. One, two, three. The first is gonna be the actual parameters that we want to set. The second is going to be the parms. And the last is gonna be control. Okay, so that is gonna go into here. We'll call that parms or parameters. And that's gonna be control. And we'll plug that into properties, okay? So if we jump back out, okay, let's jump in here and let's reset. And I need to actually grab that control. So I called it blend CTRL. Let's go to our unpack folder. And so if we jump into our properties, now we see that we have this array set up here, control. And within control, we have the parameters. And then within parameters, we have 
uh, this space in here where we're going to fill in those attributes. Let's put down a couple of value floats. This is going to be our X minimum amount, and this is going to be our X maximum amount. And we have to label these properly. So as I'm doing this, watch up here to see how this all changes, right? Because we're, we're updating that parameter in there. So the X maximum, we can set that to one. All right, let's color this green and let's jump down to the scene animate. And now we see that we have these minimum and maximum amounts. And just in case it's not working, one thing you can do just to, to make sure that this is set up truly properly. Let me see, we need a value int. And I'm not sure if they changed this, but uh, for before you had to put in lock range and specify that you wanted to actually lock the range. So you set up your minimum and maximum values and then you do, you set up the, you tell it to lock the range. Uh, so now we have that lock range in there. But as we just saw before, our minimum and maximum values were already working. So again, typically the way you would want to set this up is to set all of these connections up within a component script. And hopefully by this point, you understand how to program a component script or how to write a component script so that you could just kind of set this up yourself because it's more important to know how to set things up within the graph manually than it is to actually set them up within the component script. And that's why I wanted to focus on the manual setup first. And of course you can go and you can ex expand upon this. Hopefully this was helpful. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments below. And thank you for watching.